we're going to go ahead and get started with our media availabilities today at Martinsville Speedway. We are now joined by Chase Elliott, driver of the number nine Sun Energy One Chevrolet, fresh, fresh off his win last week at Kansas Speedway, advancing him into the playoffs to round of eight. We'll now open the floor to questions for Chase. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a wireless microphone to you. Start right here, over there, and to Bob. talk that the races at Martinsville lately have been a little bit more tame. Uh, I think one theory that I have that I'm curious to get your feedback on is with the stage racing now, it pretty much puts everyone on the same tire strategy more often than not, so you don't have the comers and goers. Is that something that you think has been a byproduct too? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, typically those late, like I remember, you know, the year, uh, Jimmy and Jeff and Clint wrecked, you know, they were all on different tire strategies, but that was all product of right there at the end of the race too. So, I mean, to me that, you know, the, the last stage is long enough to where I think there's still enough time to be different than the other guys. You know, I think those, especially the ones that are going to cause the wrecks are going to be in the closing laps and, you know, guys stayed out on 80 lap tires and somebody pit behind them, you know, there's more than 80 laps in that last stage. So, I think there's enough time still yet to to be different on on tire strategies but i think it's just uh you know a product of you know short track racing for one and being close to other guys and um you know being slow enough in the corners to where you're close to them as well so you know i think it's uh, a little bit of everything uh, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcast and WAKG. Chase, you know, as we have seen some of the talk of wild cards in the playoffs, uh, it seems like there's been a wild card so far in each stage of the race. We talked about Roval, Talladega, now Martinsville's even been considered a, a wild card. Just your thoughts on that, and then, too, what the wins have meant for Hendrick Motorsports just beyond uh, your team. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I think every week can – can be a wild card week i mean really uh I mean, there's enough stuff you know enough stuff and, and different things that can happen i just feel like that you know if you're anywhere close to the front i mean you could end up with a shot you know and uh it's just so easy to make a mistake and and uh, and whatnot that you know it's uh if you're if you're around you know inside the top five you probably have a chance you know whether it's on strategy or or a mistake by somebody or, or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, as far as the, as far as the wins go, I mean, I feel like it's been, uh, yeah, it's been to me, I think it's been great for the company and, and, um, just to get some momentum back. I mean, there's been a lot of hard work throughout the year to try to get better and, and to try to put ourselves in better positions as a, as a whole and as a company. And, and, you know, I think for the, for the men and women, around campus i i rang the the victory bell tradition there at hms this week and uh there's a lot of fire right now there and if you can create fire and and create uh you know some some momentum and and push from everyone around the campus i think that's a big deal i think it matters and uh if you know every person that works there has a hand in what goes on whether you want to believe that or not is true and if everybody that's coming to work that is ultimately building the car that's sitting here in the garage has some fire and some purpose, then I think our performance will be better. Have you guided William throughout this process as well? You weren't too long ago where he was. Now What's that now? Uh, are you guiding William through this process? Because he's about where you were a few years ago. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, William and, and Alex both, you know, I, I've said this before, but neither one of them need my help. I mean, they're they're really good at what they do and William's a champion and uh there's nothing I'm going to tell him that he doesn't already know so you know he's uh he's got his head screwed on right in my opinion and I think that uh he'll he'll be just fine you know he's he's a talented racer and and he's uh he'll be in good shape uh Zach Albert NASCAR.com Chase uh, you made your cup debut here 2015 um, as part of five races that year. Um, why was that race chosen? Why here for, for your cup debut? And what do you remember about that day? Yeah, it's, uh, been trying to forget about that day, uh, actually, but, 
Um, actually, Alan had a lot to do in choosing those races. Uh, and I think just because, you know, he tried to pick some, some really tough races or what, what races he thought I was going to struggle at. And he guessed pretty good because um, they were uh, they were terrible, uh, to be completely honest. So, yeah, I, I'm glad we did that, you know, when we did it. And I didn't have a whole lot of fun at the time. But, um, yeah, I was glad he chose the races that he did. I think Alan and I'm not sure who else kind of had a hand in that, but I know he did. And uh, I just kind of got told, hey, these are the races that uh, we're thinking about. And I, I'm not going to tell you no. So sounds good. And off we went. And real quick, have you learned something each time you've come back here? Have you picked up a little bit each yeah. time back? Yeah, I felt like we had, we made some really big really big gains last year. Learned a lot. I felt like uh, we had a test here. Uh, when do we have a test? I guess it was like the summer of 17 and uh, had a chance to run. And, and Jeff came over here with us and was able to talk to him and actually you know, be able to have enough time to digest and go through some different things that I felt like, you know, he felt like I was doing wrong. And I felt like that helped. I had a great, a great performance as far as how our cars, uh, car drove last fall and then came back this spring and sucked. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, definitely have some work to do, I think still yet, but it's so hit or miss. And this racetrack is such a, uh, such a rhythm track. Like you can go an entire weekend and never find your rhythm here or I have really hard for me to for whatever reason and uh, I think that's really key so I think just getting in practice finding that rhythm can dictate how you make your car want to drive or how you you know guide your team into making changes and if you don't find that rhythm early enough you won't guide them in the right direction so I think that's key go next to Greg Good morning, Chase. Um, Greg Engel, Auto Week. Uh, two two quick questions. The um, how, what's it like to come to a track as a as a winner, and have you been back to the pool hall anytime soon? I have not been to the pool room uh, recently. I drive by it all the time, but I haven't uh, haven't haven't been in there. So it's a it's a great week when you roll past on Monday and you see the sign, you know, and and uh, and whatnot. But yeah, I just appreciate that support that's a really cool tradition and and uh glad that they're carrying that on with me but um and glad that we're putting the belt or the the siren to use here lately uh that's that's been good too so yeah it's, uh, what was your second question yeah oh it's definitely better to come to the track uh as a winner than not so yeah i'm not complaining gonna bob Bob Parker, ESPN. Have you noticed any kind of extra effort or emphasis on your specific team now that you're the only Hendrick car left? I mean, to be honest with you, no. I feel like that. I mean, certainly, uh, I don't really see that. I guess day to day. So no, I, I haven't really noticed it. I mean, honestly, I, I really don't think our process or our preparation or how thing how things work in the shop has really changed. So no. Um, and I think if you change that now, you'd be kind of disrupting our normal flow. So, uh, be honest with you, I think the way Alan does things and the way he has his process set up throughout the week from car builds to, you know, when the engine's put in the car to when the setup's done. I mean, I think that process is trustworthy and, and, uh, I trust in that obviously our, our team does and everybody that is involved in the nine team does. So I just don't think there's any need in, in changing that anyway. So, um, I think things for us will stay pretty status quo and, and um, we'll just see where it plays out. Any additional questions for Chase? Bob, what you got? I got Blaney outed you on the podcast saying you left Metallica early. I did. Why? I did. What, yeah. were you, are you just a – was it past your bedtime or it what? It was past my bedtime. I was – I had uh, – yeah, I was uh, – it was great and all. But, um, yeah, you know, my thing is, is awesome. I'm glad I went, obviously legendary, you know, but yeah, it, I, I couldn't hear a lot of the words they were saying. So it felt like it was time for me to go. Any other questions? All right, Chase. Thanks so much. All for right. This thank weekend. you.